always get the warm and fuzzies when you show up. <laughs> I'm John Zadar. I'm the host of On Top and Hot, and this is the weekend of September 16th. Now, what I do on this show over and over and over again, I bring you hot penny stocks. Every day I am out there hunting for stocks under five bucks on any market that have potential to make us money. Now, unlike most people, I don't do my research looking at the news and the filings. Not initially. I go straight to the charts. I'm looking for charts that have heat, that look like they're ready to break out, that have a lot of volume coming in. When I find a tempting chart, then I go looking for a catalyst in the filings of the press releases. When I find one, voila, I've got myself a hot penny stock. And those are the type of stocks I like to share with you. And that's what I got for you right now. First stock we're taking a look at is a U.S. gold mining company. This is Osceola Gold, ticker OSCI. Her chart is growing and running right now. She was in hot water and she's getting out of it right now. She hasn't got any revenues, but they're starting right now. So I think right now is a real good time to take a look at Osceola Gold. OSCI, she finished today just under six cents at 5.88 cents. Over 32% gains today. She is on the pink limited tier. Now, this is bad news. This means that they're late on one or more of their financials. And if they don't get them caught up in time, they'll get yanked off of the OTC market and thrown down to the expert market. Now, that's not a delisting, but it ain't good. When you're down there, your shares cannot be bought or sold. If you are invested in them, you can't sell your shares, not until they come out of the expert market. And the only way they do that is to get their financials caught up. Once they do that, they're back on the market and things are back as they were. They do have a verified profile and a transfer agent verified. This is good. This is validated information we are getting from the OTC markets. They're doing this behind the scenes. And when you're trading pinks, you need as much validated information as you can get. So those two green ticks look great. So let's get some information about this gold company. We're going to jump on over here to their website. This is oscigold.com. They tell us here that Osceola Gold has rights to mining claims in Osceola Mining District in Marianne Canyon, which is situated about 30 miles north of Eli, Nevada. This area is one of the most prolific gold areas in the state of Nevada. As a matter of fact, the largest nugget in Nevada was found in Marianne Canyon at the Osceola Mining District. Although mining is not as popular as it once was, there are still large amounts of commodities in the ground to extract. Osceola Gold has had geological tests and several different studies done. These studies are real valuable. They just don't tell you how much resource you have in the land, but how much potential money these companies can make. Osceola Gold is sitting on a wealth of untapped gold reserves. Outside of the abundance of reserves equating to almost $4 billion, the quality of the gold reserves is considered of much higher grade than comparable mines. Additionally, Osceola Gold is well above the threshold for quality pay dirt. Due to the mining area being relatively untapped to this point, the upside potential could be enormous. Now, they've got three projects here, Marianne Canyon, MAV5, and Solomon. Lots of facts and figures here you can go through, but I think we get a better idea of their potential by looking at the example they give us down here. They tell us that in 2010, Skookum Geological Report did a study and revealed that the MAV-5 claim contains gold from the surface to the bedrock. That's completely upside down. Normally, you got to dig down to the bedrock, beat that rock up to get your gold out. They are getting gold from the top down to the bedrock. The report also indicates that the average yield in the Solomon III was over double the other claims. Now, the formal study done by the Skookum Geological Report was taken and readjusted to the $1,400 gold price and uncovered proven reserves of $1.6 billion. The overburden, the dirt at the top that they have to remove before they get to the gold, is at just 10 to 30 feet before the pay dirt is uncovered, making this a simple earth-moving project. 
This is how simple it's going to be, folks. The company will scoop up the pay dirt in these channels, process it through the wash plant, and then recover the gold. The gold being recovered is close to 20 karat quality, and through improved mining methods, up to 90% of the gold can be recovered. With a current production capacity of only 100 tons per hour, and assuming non-stop production, it would take approximately 32 years to go through the entire Mary Canyon region. That's how big these are, folks. Now, according to mining.com, gold pay dirt is reported in grams per ton. How many grams of gold and how many tons of dirt? And works out to about $45 per gram, assuming the current spot price of gold is $1,400. Now, a good thickness is about 100 meters deep. People get excited when they hear there's gold and all you got to do is go down 300 feet to get that gold. That's what they're excited by. This is a lot better than that. But to give you a really good example, there was one company out there that did a geo scan. It was in 2016. The company was called Aurelian Resource. They reported that they had found gold at 12.8 grams per ton, 216 meters down. You're talking over 600 feet down they had to go before they could even get to the gold. Well, when that news came out, the stock jumped <laughs> from $2 to $22. And right now, the CEO of this company can't figure out why they're not jumping. Now, let me show you how much money this is worth. They got a great example here. A Komatsu 380 front loader, they've got lots of different pieces of equipment, but this is the one they're going to share with us, can normally scoop six yards of dirt into a bucket. Each yard of ore normally represents 1.5 tons. This means that six yards in a bucket equates to nine tons. At one gram of gold per ton, a bucket is worth $405. That's nine tons times a gram at 45 bucks each. At the Osceola mine, the worst case scenario for a bucket of ore is five grams. That's worst case scenario. That now makes each scoop of dirt worth $2,025. On the high end, 15 grams. Each scoop could be worth as much as $6,000. At a full scale production, the company estimated that 100 tons per hour, which is equivalent to 11 scoops per hour, using the worst case scenario that they've had of 5 grams per ton, that equates to $22,500 per hour. <laughs> now, you really want to start playing with the numbers. They've got the lowest yield down here, 5 grams, working 10 hours a day, 5 days a week all the way up to 15 grams, working 24 hours a day, seven days a week, non-stop. And you can come up with some huge numbers here, folks. So you see the potential. All they have to do is move 30 feet of dirt, grab dirt, wash it through the water, sort through the pebbles, and grab the gold. This is easy money, folks. This is literal pay dirt. Let's go take a look at the relative volume for the company. Jumping on back to the OTC markets to get this information. Looking at Osceola Gold's relative volume. Over the last 30 days, she's been doing roughly 150,000 shares. Definitely under the radar. Friday, she more than doubled that, jumping up to 336,000 shares. Not a huge number, but it's a nice increase percentage-wise. Share structure for Osceola Gold. Outstanding share count is about 292 million, and it looks like it's a 50 50 deal here. The restricted shares, those that the insiders, the management own, that's about 146 million, leaving us a float of about 146 million. Not a great float, but we've seen worse by all means. Financials for Osceola, she hasn't got anything. Not on the annual, not on the quarterly but they are right at that point to starting to generate revenues right now. Looking at her disclosures, well, we do have to take concern with these because she's pink limited. This means she is late on one or more of her financial filings. So we dive into her financial filings. Here is the date that she files them, and this is for the period she's filing them for. 
So I look for a bald spot here. I see we've got December 2022, March 2023, June 2023. Nothing's missing. Well, right up here at the top, I see an attorney letter. This attorney letter was supposed to be put out with the annual report. Anytime you put out an annual report on a pink tier, you have to have an attorney letter because you don't have a CPA looking at them. You got to have somebody with authority look. Now, the attorney isn't looking at the numbers. He's looking at the information. But once that attorney letter is in, all is good. They look all caught up to me. So by all rights, this pink limited should turn into pink. And that's going to be another catalyst right there. Jumping into the news. We have got one piece of news that came out August 9th. Osceola Gold announces commencement of operations and organizational update. They tell us here that the company is excited to announce that it is now fully operational and is scheduled to commence full-scale production and mining activities late August. That's it, folks. There's no more to really know. They are doing it now, late August, and we're into September. So the next quarterly report, we should see some money coming in. So you've got a gold mining company here that's just got out of hot water, probably going pink current. They've just started operations and it looks like they could make a ton of money. All we need is a hot chart. We got that too. Let's do some charting. We're going to do this on my free trading platform, Think or Swim. I got this when I signed up with TD Ameritrade and that was free too. So we are looking at Osceola Gold. This is a six-month, four-hour view. Back in February, we hit our low of 008, and it was just last Thursday we hit our high of just over 7.5 cents. That is virtually a 1,000% run from the low bubble to the high bubble. Off of that low bubble, she bounced herself up on top of the 200, and she's been up there ever since. However, this last month, she has just been laying on top of that 200, waiting for something to happen. And then three days ago, something happened. She jumped from two and a half cents up to seven and a half cents, tripling your money, then pulling back to just over a nickel, allowing us to keep over 100% gains on that rip and dip. All of the SMAs are turned up and climbing right now. Volume is very strong. And our oscillators, all of them, are pushing to the moon right now. Every single one of them is climbing up. Our RSI is clear up near 69 right now. 20-day, one-hour view. It doesn't look like a whole lot was happening here. She was under the 200 for quite a while. But look at our SMAs. They were all coming downhill. And right here, when she broke the 200, all of them were in a knot. You couldn't even see which one was where. On the other side of that bar, it refracted. All of those SMAs spread open and started climbing. This looks beautiful. Prices floating on the nine-day SMA had a dip close to the 20, and she is now floating up again. All of our oscillators are still climbing, the PPO, the MACD, and the RSI. Everything is looking nice. Five-day, five-minute. We got a low back here of 2.5 cents, hit our high of 7.5 cents, and right now we are about five and a half cents. She is floating on that 50 day SMA. We did have a rubber ball bounce here. That's where the rubber ball comes under the water and then comes back up on top of the water. And she's just been floating up there, but it looks like she's about ready to take flight again. Oscillators look good, folks. Our PPO is starting to climb. Our MACD is starting to climb and our RSI is climbing. OSCI. I'm excited about her, folks. She just started operations. I'm sure the next financial will show us revenues. That will be the first revenues they've had on the books. And we know there's a lot of gold out there. So I've got big aspirations for OSCI. So should you. Put it on your watch list. She's already growing. Our next hot penny stock is a solar company right here in good old USA. This is Single Point Inc. ticker S-I-N-G. Now, this company is a roaring success. She just constantly increases her revenues. That's what most of her news is about, how much money they're making. Her chart was really hot. They did a reverse split back in July. They kicked the price up from $0.02 cents up to $0.08. Cents. And then the chart went all over the place, ending up back on the 200. And it looks like it's ready to bounce right now. And she's got good cause. The revenues are strong.
Singh finished the day on Friday at $1.29, just over 17% gains. Now she's on the middle tier of the OTC, the QB, which we like to refer to as the better tier. It's better than the pinks. On the QB, you have to have a CPA look at your financials. They must be audited. So we're going to get actual factual numbers we can use to weigh up the company. Those are called fundamentals. They're quite important. With pinks, all you get are disclosures. They're disclosing the numbers they've got, but no CPA has looked at them. Done no accounting. We don't know what they mean. So being on the QB, it is better. It makes them more trustworthy, more transparent. So they've got verified numbers. They've also got verified information at verified profile and transfer agent. Looking good. And they've got that penny stock exempt. I really like to see this. This removes the idea of them being a risky investment. How? Well, this tells me the company's been in business for three to five years, have had millions of dollars of assets or revenues during that time, and they've kept up with their financials. They're doing what they're supposed to. They're being responsible. They're working. They're making money. They're filing reports. This is a company you can trust. So what is Single Point about? Well, they are a solar company, but they do a lot of other things as well. Single Point is initially focused on building the largest network of renewable energy solutions and modernizing the traditional solar and energy storage model. The company is also actively exploring future growth opportunities in air purification, electric vehicle charging, solar as a subscription service, and additional energy efficiencies and appliances that enhance sustainability and healthier life. Now, jumping over to their website, they've basically got three subsidiaries. Boston Solar. This is their solar company that is building solar energy for houses, companies. This is the company that does all the manual labor. The second one is EnergyWise. EnergyWise generates their own leads. And then all the extra leads that they don't put to use, they sell to their competitors for more money. <laughs> How about that? And then BPA Solutions. This is their pure air breathing subsidiary. So they've got a lot of things they are getting involved with right now and all of them are adding more and more revenues to their pot. Checking out that relative volume for the company. Wasn't expecting that. Look at this, way under the radar, less than 30,000 shares a day for the last 30 days and Friday she fell down to 23,000 shares and still she took a gain of 17% on 23,000 shares. That says something. Share structure for Singh, we've got ourselves a nice low float. Outstanding share count is only 7.3 million. Insiders, the management own about 3.4 million for themselves. That leaves us about 3.8 million in the float. It's an outstanding low float in an American solar company that is hot. Financials for Singh, Big jump over 2021 to 2022, going from $808,000 to $21.7 million. Wow. Quarterly, well, she's had a nice increase over the last year. June of 2022, she was at $4.5 million. June of 2023, she was at $8.1 million. Strong, steady revenues right now. Looking at her balance sheet, so we've got an idea of what's going on here. In the bank, she's got $564,000. We got to bring those three zeros over here too. Total assets, 19 million, and total liabilities, 24 million. Average, we're not going to brag about their assets, but their revenues are doing quite well. Looking at the company's disclosures, well, we do have a couple of recent ones here. We got an 8K that came out September 8th. This has to do with a very small loan they took out, $180,000. And then we got a POS AM, positive amendment. This is informing us that one of their big investors is selling 2.2 million shares back onto the market. That's not going to change the float or anything like that, so no concerns. So taking a look at her news. Now she's got lots of news here. And most of it is about their revenues increasing and how fast they're doing it. 
But there is a piece of news here I want to touch on to, though it has nothing to do with why the stock is going to run. This came out May 11th. 1606 Corporation increases production to meet CBD product demand. 1606 Corporation works with CBD. Now, why is there news here? Because it's a subsidiary of Sing. It was a few years back, they spun this out onto the NASDAQ and gave all their investors dividends. They got free shares in 1606. But the stock didn't go up on the market. So all those shares were restricted because there was nothing you could do with them. Well, not too long ago, this year, I believe it was, 1606 came on the market. And if memory serves, she did something like 10,000% gains the first day or two. Just ripped it up. The sad part was all the investors that had dividends in the company, their shares were still restricted. And I haven't heard any updates that said that's changed. So the stock is on the market trading, but all the people that had dividends in it, they're not able to trade their shares yet. And I don't know why. Now, the most recent piece of news came out August 21st. This is an update that gives us a lot of different types of information. They tell us here on July 20th, 2023, the company effected a reverse split in an effort to comply with the minimum bid price requirement for an uplisting. Will Roston, the CEO of SinglePoint, said, Current shareholders have notified the company that the reverse split has created some trading abnormalities and inefficiencies in at least three major trading platforms commonly utilized by our shareholders. Ralston emphasized, additionally, critical shareholder information such as the bid and the ask, executed trades, market capitalization, 52-week trading range, all have been inaccurate and are just recently belated updated across platforms. Yesterday, August 16th, there were still investment sites with inaccuracies and inconsistent market data and has understandably generated shareholder investor confusion. Now, this company's got a ton of shareholders. You would think all companies have thousands of shareholders. You'd be amazed. Some companies have less than a hundred. A lot of companies only have a few hundred. This company has 37,000 investors. They tell us that their second quarter revenues were record revenues, 8.1 million, compared to a year ago when they had 4.5 million. They have 29.5 million trailing 12 month revenue. This is money they're still earning. Contracts they've got on the books, they're still taking care of. That money is going to be coming in. And their net loss has decreased by 59% versus the same period last year. The bottom line, it's all about their revenues. The revenues are growing. Business is growing because everybody's getting more ecologically minded. Solar energy is a big deal now, and it is becoming more efficient to do. I think this company's hot, and the chart is hot. It may have been hotter. She may have crashed back down to the 200, but I think she's ready to launch again. Let me show you. It is an interesting chart. This is Single Point Inc., ticker S-I-N-G, six-month, four-hour view. You can see she had a big rip and dip, and it looks like she was doing absolutely nothing up until that point, which really isn't true. If we focus in on just that area, you can see she's been in a downtrend. This is back in January. This corner is July. She went from nine cents all the way down to two cents. Then we had our reverse split. That was in July, taking the price from two cents all the way up to eight dollars. It was a one in 400 reverse split. She came all the way back down, tapped that 200, rolled off of it, back up over the 50, giving herself a nice push to four dollars and 13 cents before she crashed back down to the 200. And right now it looks like she's bouncing off of again. Our 50 day SMA is following suit. Our volume, very light. Our PPO is underneath the pink and flat as a pancake. Our MACD is actually doing a crossover right now. And our RSI is super low, down at 40. I don't like to see it anywhere under 55. Looking at our 20-day, one-hour view. We got a nice bounce there. Our low was $1.02. She went up to $4.17, crossing the 200-day SMA. TP'd off here. 
came back down, and right now she's at about a buck twenty-nine, just about ready to cross that fifty. She's arguing with it right now. Our oscillators show us a crossover is imminent on our PPO. Our MACD is crossing the signal line right now. RSI is now warmed up to 57. That doesn't look bad. That is a setup. But check out the five minute chart. That's a setup. That is an atypical breakout right there that's ready to happen Monday. We had a high here of $1.55. She fell down to that low, bounced off of that low, crossed the 50, went straight to the 200, hit her head on it, fell back only to the nine, no deeper, squeezed herself between the nine and the 200, and right now she is sitting on top, ready to pop. <laughs> the oscillators are looking better. Our PPO is climbing. Uh, MACD is trying to cross back up again, and our RSI is at 60. And look at all of our SMAs here. All of them are turned around and pointing up. They're gonna be crossing the 200. When that 20-day and that 50-day SMA cross that 200, you're going to have yourself what they call golden crosses. A very strong technical sign. You can usually expect a push in the price. Saying she's making a lot of money. That's what we look for in our companies. And the chart is set up. Come on, folks. Put it on your watch list. Now. <laughs> this next stock, let's think of this as an update. This is ticker CEI Camber Energy. It really isn't about her chart. Her chart's in sad condition right now. She's at a low. She's down at 32 cents. Had a bad day Friday, dropping about 8.5%. But this company was involved in a merger for a long time with Viking. Both companies deal with crude oil and natural gas, and together they were going to be something. Well, finally, the merger closed but we haven't seen a bounce on the charts. She's actually been falling. So the company came out with the news we really need, the pro forma figures. Before the merger, each company had their own revenues, right? Each company has their own assets. But now that they've merged together, you got to add all that up to one company, the new improved CEI. And that's what we've got, the new improved figures. And they are nice, definitely proving the company is undervalued and the stock has good cause to start rising now. CEI finished today at 32 cents with about 8.5% drop. She's on the major exchange, New York Stock Exchange. So you're going to be able to trade this for free and you can trade it pre-market, after-market as well. You can't do that with OTC stocks. So what was the relative volume around the company? She dropped on Friday, mm -mm. going from 3.8 million down to 3.4 million. Share structure for the company. They tell us here that the outstanding share count is 88 million, but you're going to see in the news after the merger, it is now 92 million. They don't tell us what the float is, but we know it's not going to be more than the outstanding share count, and it could be considerably less. Now, they do give us some financial figures over there, but taking a peek at the before, if you will, at the end of 2022, CEI had just about $600,000. And quarterly, eh, they weren't even doing $100,000. Now, let's take a look at those numbers, and we're going to do it from Twitter. I put a post up about this. Camber Energy announces pro forma values for merger with Viking. The new outstanding share count is $92 million. So looking at the assets of the companies, this is Viking's column, and this is Camber's column. Looking at cash in the bank. Viking has 1.1 million, Camber has 137,000. <laughs> Together, they now have 1.2 million dollars. That's nice. Looking at the total assets, Camber, all by herself, she had just over 30 million dollars worth of assets. Viking has 47 million. Together, that should be 77 million. Well, somewhere along the journey, they picked up an additional $12 million. I don't know how, but it now totals out to $90 million the new and improved CEI has. And looking at the revenues, just jump on down to the bottom there. Total revenues. Viking had 
$14.2 million for the six months ended June 30th, 2023. Camber had $177,000. Not even $200,000 and Viking had over $14 million. Well, guess what? We get to take all of that, add it up, and now the new improved CEI is worth $14.4 million in revenue over the last six months. That is a huge jump, folks, from $200,000 to $14 million. Doesn't matter how they got their merger, selling stuff, they are there now. So the company's just had a huge increase in value. They've put it on the table. The stock is at a low with a 52 week high of over $13. I think we could see some run and who knows how far that run could be. Let's go take a look at this chart. We're taking a look at a one day, one year chart for CEI, Camber Energy. It was a full year ago we hit the high of $13.65 and it was just here on the 12th that we hit our low of 30 cents. Coming down to six months, four hours, six months ago, our high was $2.64. You can see she's been wrestling with that 200 a lot, really trying to get on top of it, just not having any success. And I really don't know why. They've been making strong revenues for a while. And here, she's bouncing off of that low bubble. She's gotten up underneath her 50, and she's bumped her head on it quite a few times, and she's wrestling with it right now. Our oscillators show some heat is building up. We got a crossover imminent on our PPO. The uh, MACD is trying to get over the signal line. RSR is lifting. And I do see a spread on my PPO and my ADX. My ADX shows me trend continuation. When the line is straight, it means whatever the trend is, is continuing. As soon as this line changes direction, my trend has changed. Well, one of the patterns is when this red line is coming down, my ADX and my PPO, the blue line, are going up and they're separating, getting further and further apart. Guaranteed, 100% your price is rising. So that's looking promising. Let's come on down to our 20-day, one-hour view. Still in a downtrend, no doubt about that. She's had 54, 55 cents here, bouncing off of that low, getting right up underneath that 200 on an hour, hourly chart and landing on the 50-day SMA, which is a sound place to be. She has been underneath the 50 most of the time here and now she is respecting it, standing on it, jumping off of it towards the 200. Here comes our 200 haul. I think she is ready to pounce, my friends. Our oscillators say she was strong, she cooled off, but she looks like she's in the midst of recovery right now. Five day, five minute. Lots of volatility in there. Look at these big drops in the morning. Look at these big pops in the afternoon. No telling what she's gonna do. She's got a low here of 30 cents and a high of 37 cents. She's been under the 200, over the 200. And right now, where does 32 cents put us? Just smidged underneath the 200 on top of the 50. She's fighting to push her way up right now, showing a lot of enthusiasm. And now we've got a real catalyst. Our company was only worth $30 million last month, and now it's worth $90 million. Last month, they were doing $200,000 worth of revenue. Now they're doing $14 million worth of revenue. Wow. This has got to be a catalyst and a half. Now, whether the investors recognize it, I don't know, folks, but it's worthy of you recognizing it. Put CEI on your watch list. When the volume starts coming in, because it's really low right now, when the volume starts coming in, this thing could shoot with a 52-week high of over $13, and we're currently at $0.32. Cents. What the? You're still here? Really? <laughs> More? Okay, I haven't cleaned up yet. I've got leftovers. I did a lot of research over the weekend. I saw a lot of hot charts and I knew I wasn't going to be able to talk about all of them. So I just started taking pictures of them. Well, before you knew it, I had a bunch. So I categorized them. <laughs> yeah, I do this in my spare time. So since you're here, I might as well share them with you. So these are all cannabis here. 
All of these are hot charts, look like they're ready to run to me. That doesn't necessarily mean tomorrow, but tomorrow, the next day or the day after that, they're all looking hot. Now, I didn't do any research on any of these, so I have got nothing to tell you about them. Now, I do know with these cannabis stocks here, not all of them are dealing with flour. These three down here, one is a pharmaceutical company dealing with cannabinoids. Tinley is dealing with beverages, hard liquor. You know, they're trying to make stuff that's like a whiskey, but it's made out of THC. And then you got Night Foods putting CBDs in ice cream. Now, you don't necessarily think of these as cannabis companies, but that's the sector they're in. Now, I got a whole bunch of hot charts here. Don't take notes yet. You can always come back later and pause it and get it then. So we've got hot charts for any company under five bucks on any of the markets. And I don't know anything about any of them. Maybe I do just by chance, like micro mobility. We looked at this not too long ago. She had a nice serious run. Well, today she had some volume come in and she popped strong all the way up to this high up here where we looked at her. Most of these charts you're gonna be looking at are your atypical breakout charts where the price is deep underneath the 200 and then when the 200 gets close, you see that the price starts moving towards it, tagging it, and then all of a sudden it breaks through and you have a breakout. But I've also got some very serious runners here floating on the nine day up, 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 like it's never gonna quit. I don't know why it's doing that. That's for you to find out. Got some more down here. Lots of different types of heat in charts. Bouncing off of the 200-day SMA with your two, your SMAs all pushing. Um, here, this could be a very big cup and handle. Though right now, just recovery is good enough. Look at all the volume pushing on that right now. And some more atypical breakouts here that are setting up to get on top of the 200 and run. Here's a warrant. We don't look at mini warrants anymore. We used to when SPACs were hot. Every SPAC had a warrant. And when the SPAC was heating up, so was the warrant. And they were running thousands of percent gains. Well, this warrant here, she started down here at about 20 cents. And she is up there at $1.75. And I have no clue what kind of warrant this is. But she's got a hot chart. Some more atypical breakout charts here. A recovery on LVO. And a few more hot atypical breakout charts. Look at that. These are all starting to break out at this very moment. This one right there is just starting, and this one has already got a good run going. You getting all these tickers? You can come back and get them. But I got one more set to share with you. Lithium. Now, I did not purposely look for lithium. It's just I saw them doing my research. So I took pictures because they had hot charts. Now, these all have something in common. I do believe they are all United States lithium mine companies. And it doesn't matter which one you look at. None of them has an upper hand over the other yet. None of them are doing any mining. Nobody's making any revenues. There's only one lithium mining company in America, ticker ALB. They own Silver Peak, which has been around for over 100 years. Well, their price of their stock right now is like near $180. All the rest of these lithium companies have lots of land in super rich lithium area waiting to get their hands into the money and they just haven't been given permission yet. So everybody's getting excited as you can see. This isn't just a couple days running. These are all four hour charts we're looking at. And look at how long this has been running and how fast it's growing. Surge battery metals. EV car over here. She has been growing for six months and LTUM is just starting with a lot of fervor and she's about ready to break out. And there are more lithium mining companies in Nevada that have not got permission and have lots of land and they are in the same boats as these companies. So more due diligence can really pay off. I've given you a lot of hot charts here. And I'm getting this video out a wee bit earlier today so you've actually got time to do some due diligence. No excuses. So while you're out there, do some due diligence on those three stocks I shared with you today. I like all of them. Look at AITX. That's another one I wanted to talk about, but we just didn't have time. Remember folks, the more you know, the more you're gonna grow. See ya. 